Battle Union fans, and welcome back to the TBU's Power Rankings. This is week five, if I'm not mistaken. I, as always, am Chaos in the Sky, and I'm joined by the Shroom Raver. How's it going, Shroom? It's going pretty well, in fact, Chaos. Uh, yes, hello, Battle Union fans. Welcome to week five of the Power Rankings. We've got some really interesting games, a few mid sort of mid scores, uh, some that were closer than they appeared, and a few surprise results, which we were not expecting. So, with that said, and without further ado, shall we crack straight on with the list? I'm actually going to take over this to start, because I want to go ahead and get this explanation out of the way. Ah, Baby, yes. Baby I SS is in 12th again, as he has been for like two or three weeks. He hasn't gotten a win yet, unfortunately. He got 5-0'd by Frito this week, and he has made the decision to leave the league for personal reasons. Uh, not so much, although it did contribute somewhat, the fact that he had just been losing straight. He's not the kind of guy who just quits because he can't, or that he hasn't been winning. But uh, he had some very personal issues going on that he felt he needed to step away from league in general to handle. And so he unfortunately had to go. So he is gone from the league now. We wish him all the best and all that jazz. Uh, we're not getting him a replacement per se because he is 0-5. He can't really do much for playoffs. He may be able to affect other people's differential deciding other people who get into playoffs, but I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure even mathematically he's out of playoffs now. So I will be playing his last three games for him, and his Week 4 and Week 5 match will not be uploaded, unfortunately, because he's not going to do it, and I'm not going to commentate over a game that I didn't do. But I'll be playing his Week 6, 7, and 8. But regardless of how poorly or good I do, which I think I have to play Kyle, Ethan, and RTK, two of which I'm pretty much guaranteed to lose, I might be able to beat RTK. But uh, yeah. from here on out, SS is just going to be left at the bottom of the power rankings, no matter any results he'll just take up 12th spot. So it'll essentially, we'll just be going through 1 through 11. And we mm. might talk about my performance if it was especially bad and Shroom wants to poke fun at me one day or not. <laughs> but, uh, oh, I look forward to that. But uh, the team will remain called the Miami Dolphinies for the rest of the season. It's just going to be the last three games. I'll upload them myself and all that. So I just wanted to let you guys know what had happened with SS and all and how that's going to be going and that no matter the results, he will remain 12th in power rankings as a result of him not actually playing. So, yeah. with all of that said, I also think that since we couldn't watch his perspective because he didn't upload it, we should just talk about this game when we get to Frito, and let's move on to 11 because we are in a bit of a rush today. Yes, that seems fair. Uh, sitting in at number 11, we say it every week that we didn't expect to see him here, but it is going to be former champion Paul and the West Coast Wingles. He had a tough matchup this time against Trev, uh, taking a 2-0 loss there. Um... I was loving Max Attack, Ferrothorn. Um, no removal on Paul's side. I was a, a little disappointed to see no removal. You know, we talked about Trev using Toxic Spike so well before against teams that don't have a grounded uh, Poison type. And he brought them again. He actually brought Hazard Attack, but we'll come on to that. So no removal from Paul was a worry. I was also really surprised not to see Blaziken. I thought it had a pretty useful matchup against quite a lot of Trev's team. But... He did bring a pretty cool cool squad, a very powerful squad, another cool setup Mew as well, and Mega Blastoise, who was putting in an absolute shift early on. It did so well against Trev's team, uh, but came towards sort of mid-game, and Mega Blastoise goes down, taking Cure and Black with it, and putting in a decent shift on the way, but it was such a necessary team member for everything left. Um... What else do we have then? Oh, yes. Seven years of Licky Licky versus Reggie still. Uh, that sapped my very soul. Um, once Ferrothorn went down, you know, you had a Licky Licky with knockoff, heal bell, wish protect. Uh, nothing was toxic on his opponent's side, so it became a little yet less useful, but it still could have done something at the end game. Um, you know, he was looking to try and use it, maybe to take out that Mega Zam, but it got flinched, which is unfortunate, because that meant it couldn't go for the heal bell. Uh... Toxic took its toll, and it was in range of Mega Zam, whereas before it wouldn't have been. So there was a little bit of uh, bad luck for Paul in a couple of isolated areas here. I generally liked the way he played. I don't think, you know, we've talked about Paul making a few mistakes along the way, and he's mentioned it himself. But I don't think he played badly here. I don't think he made mistakes here, um, aside maybe from a couple of team-building decisions. Um, but I think, in general, his play was very good. Uh, he just, you know, came up short on the day, really. Yeah, I think you're right. Definitely not having... I didn't realize they didn't have Rapid Spin on that Mega Stoice. Not no. having removal against a team that has three setters of different types of hazards that are all pretty good at doing it. Like, Greninja mm. is like... You normally just want it to be attacking, but it can set spikes if it needs to. It, and it then, did this week. It did this week, yeah. And Registeel yeah. can, like, 
always get Stealth Rocks up at least, like, one or two times a game on mm. average. And Scallopede is really good at getting Toxic Spikes up, especially when you're playing the Protect Mind games. But uh, looking yeah. at his team, I am also surprised. I didn't realize this before, but just like you said, like, I'm looking at this team, and the team that Trev brought, especially, four of the Mons are weak to, uh, are weak to a Blaziken Stab. And then mm. Mega Alakazam is made of paper on Fizdef. It probably dies to a Flare Blitz either way, so it may as well be weak to its stab. Really, his only option to switch into it is Blastoise. Yeah, Blastoise is only counter. Megazam does check uh, Blaziken, even the Scarf variant. Uh, Megazam outspeeds it, it just because it's a Megazam. Um, maybe like a sort of um, an agility set could have put in some work with like Flare Blitz, High Jump Kick, and... <laughs> Mac punch for the Greninja, coverage for the Blastoise, something like that. But, you know, these are some team building decisions that, you know, with Paul's squads, it's always going to be tough to uh, to pick to pick the six. Um, he had some really nice sets along the way, especially defensive bulk up me was cool. It was a shame he didn't get to use it because, as I say, it could have put in a nice amount of work. Has uh, I'm starting to realize a correlation that every week Paul brings a Mew with setup moves, he loses the game? Because I think he's this brought it every single true. week. In fact, I've actually noticed that every time he brings Pokemon, he loses. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, this is also like the first season I've seen him use set up Mew, so I want to make that specific mm. correlation because he that... should probably tr he should probably try bringing Digimon. Dude, War Greymon would have destroyed Kiram B. <laughs> Undoubtable, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's rough for Paul. Uh, I think he is just very barely tiny little bit mathematically, but it's it's not going to happen. It's... Mm. I'm sorry, well, Paul. I'm sorry, Paul. It's not going to happen. I don't care if there's a point four four chance. It's like, it's it's not going to happen, yeah. man. But yeah. uh, we hope that you do well in your last three games regardless, and we look forward to seeing you. We'd like to see you get up a little bit in PR, if nothing else. You can still end the season not at the bottom. That's what's important. You can still, like, you could absolutely still finish in, like, seventh place overall or something. It's better than 11th or 12th. But, yeah, uh, yeah I think you said all that needs to be said. That's a... Uh, Licky Licky versus uh, Registeel is actually the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. But <laughs> that's a matchup you never want to have come to fruition. But let's move no. on to 10th place, which will see RTK in what is, in my opinion, the most interesting match of the week. Uh, RTK, yes. against, RTK is in 10th, him and the Portland Timbers. He was against Slyro, mm. and he lost to Slyro 3-0, where Slyro finally managed to have Mega Mawile get more than one kill and not die. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, I liked... Some some of what RTK brought was quite fun, really. Um, Belly Drum Baton Pass Hypno is a nice idea. It was a shame he didn't get to use it. Um, but then we get into the game, and RTK had precisely one switch into Mega Morwal, and he had used it up by turn three. So it was never going to be easy for RTK at this point. Um, there was a lot of stuff happening in this game that makes us quite happy to see sort of the fair play from our coaches. You know, actually, this the game that you'd seen on YouTube was uh, the second version. There was a disconnect, um, and after missing some moves, they talked it over and sort of went for fair play over going for things new. So, you know, you'd see clicking Stealth Rock twice due to a miss early on. It's nice to see fair play like that. Um, I felt like RTK could have kept Finney in versus Morwell when he kept withdrawing Tapu Finney. Um, I, I don't know whether Finney had, like, Surf... Or anything uh, that could damage the Morwal. I haven't seen his um his Finny build, but I feel like it could have taken a hit versus Morwal and tried to get some damage on it. Uh, we did see good prep though. You know, um, uh, we know I know Sly was surprised to see uh, the the Z Ice Punch Metagross, like specifically for Drampa when he doesn't have that much of an ice weakness uh, going on. Maybe only the only other thing being the Thunderous Eye of of any particular note. RTK also. Um, RTK also expected there to be a Drampa on the other side of the field. Yes. Oh, no, actually, I'm looking, I'm seeing Crocodile as well. Uh, it was and, probably and, for And Cottony. Oh, yeah, Cottony, of course. Thunderous Eye. So, yeah, actually, there's, there's a few things he could have hit, but I, I'd understand Sly's surprise. I 100% believe that RTK, being the person he is and that I know him as much as I do, absolutely brought that specifically for Drampa and nothing else. Yeah, I could well that, imagine. That and maybe, like, after two Meteor Mashes, if he gets both of the boosts, it can maybe KO Mega Mawile. Mm. But, I mean, we know full well that RTK is unpredictable. Because from nowhere, I think the set that no one expected him to bring, the Power Construct Zygarde, what a maneuver from RTK. That was brilliant. That was inspired. I don't think anyone expected the Power Construct Zygarde. 
Yeah, but I mean, then he just sacked it like an idiot. He should have switched out and came back in with it later. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> there was a... Uh, apparently, there's something that is above my head, because I don't gen. When it comes to genning, that 90% of the time when you try to put a Zygarde into a game, at least the way that our boy Jade Hex gens, 90% of the time, it for some reason changes its ability to power construct. And RTK... This is actually, I think this is the second time this has happened to RTK, the first time he caught it before it happened. This time he didn't until there was mm. a Megazord on his side of the field. <laughs> yeah, oh God, Are you I'm okay? <laughs> Man, I'm a little bit ill, ladies and you gents, need to and, uh, if I laugh too much, I cough. You need it's to activate your really. power construct by the sound of it. It would seem so. But uh, once again, we saw quite good fair play from RTK. He basically just said, okay, Sly, I've, 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 I've balled this up. Um, kill off my Zygarde, then I'll revenge you. Um, but by that time, you know, RTK just didn't have enough left for Sly's threats of, um, of Volcanion and, and, uh, Morwell, Mega Morwell. So, yeah, it was a good, a good game, a fair, fair played game, if, if not fair in the fact that there was a Power Construct Zygarde. Um, but it's it's good to see sort of this kind of fair play between our, our managers and our coaches. Yes, we did. Uh, as soon as that happened, uh, they decided how to end out the battle themselves and then got with yeah. the admins to talk about what to do. And uh, we did some theory modding with them, and mm. we don't know for certain who could have won there. It honestly could have gone either way if the power construct hadn't procced from what we figured out. But at the end of the day, RTK just said, you know, Sly's... Uh, Sly had a chance to win just as much as I did, and he's got uh, mm. he still got playoff chances to look at and all that. And I'm the one that had the illegal Pokemon, so he very gracefully, like a good friend, took the 3-0 loss. And yeah. I'm very glad that we have coaches like this who can be cool about these things. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so yeah, good fair play from RTK. And with that, I think what we'll probably do is move on to number nine in our list, and that is going to be Frido. Frido and the Welshians moving up rapidly, rising up to the heady heights of number nine. I'm not sure he's ever been there before on this list, so this will be this will be new ground for Frido. I'm sure he'll be I very think, happy. I think we might have put his team at nine. His team was nine or ten when we first started ah. in post draft. I can't remember. I know it was in the bottom half because we didn't like ah. his speed tiers. So so five weeks later, he's living up to it. Yeah, exactly, because we nice. put him, I know that we put him down lower because of his speed tiers and having, like, eight base 100s, but, mm. uh, yeah, this week, Frito actually got a 5-0 win over SS, beat him so bad he had to kick him out of the league as a result, but, uh... Whoa, whoa, no. whoa, whoa, come on now, come on now. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to, but, uh... Um, yeah, we'll talk about this game, I mean, Frito, he seems to be actually genuinely, all jokes aside, sort of on the ascendancy a little bit, um, this, this week... You know, he mentioned he was scared of Rachi. I was a bit confused with his Zapdos build. You know, he was scared of Rachi as as one should be. Uh, and he brings the Zapdos, which is the right thing to do against the Rachi. But there was no heat wave on there. Uh, he, he couldn't really hit it outside of Discharge. Uh, so he could have, you know, gone for that and started wearing it down. But I was surprised to see no heat wave. Um, Unburden Excel Gore because speed is literally everything. Um, that I would forget, probably be one of the I, fastest I, things I for, ever. I forgot it even got that ability. Yeah, it's because no one runs it, because he doesn't need it, except for Frito, because he thinks outside the box, like a true competitor should. Um, what else do we have? Tailwind Shaman. Yes, he's bought Tailwind Shaman this week. He's bought a, an actual speedy what? Tailwind well, Shaman. I was about to say, what's its speed nature? Finest. It was, it was um, well, it, I think it was uh, invested in speed. Uh, I don't know if it was modest or, um, or timid, but it had speed investment, it had Tailwind, it had powerful moves, and it put massive massive pressure on very early uh ended up coming out two and oh from this game so good use of shaman from frito uh it's worth mentioning on on baby eyes side that um there was no salamence but there was a lot of other expected things like salazzle has a lovely time versus frito and frito you know using tailwind effectively um baby i was able to stall it out but at the cost of progly but he did the best he could against it uh, and then there was this momentum game involving Zapdos on both sides. You know, Frito made an overprediction, which nearly cost him massively. Baby Eye took back that momentum, but wasn't able to capitalize. He was making a lot of risky doubles and taking spikes damage. Then Frito gets back the momentum with Rotom versus the Zapdos. Uh, so, yeah, and um, yeah, Zapdos was able to just wear things down. Um, and Baby Eye, again, just not really able to take advantage. He was earthquaking on a Zapdos that. That, that wasn't faster than Mamoswine. I wasn't sure what was going on there. 
play the flinch game almost successfully. Um, but yeah, Frito was able to win out in the end. Uh, Shaman and Zapdos, very much the MVPs of this one. Uh, nominal performances from Arcanine and Cabalion. Uh, a tough one for Baby Eye. Um, as you say, this will be his last week with us this season. Uh, we do wish him well. I uh, hope everything is good with you, my man. And uh, yeah, don't be a stranger to the league. You're always welcome. Exactly. Couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, Frito, actually, speaking of Frito being on the rise, he's, this is week five, he's 3-2. Yeah. And I believe he's tied, he's behind Jim on diff, but they both have three wins, two losses, and then Alex has two wins, three losses. So they're all still mm. neck and neck. Anyone from Mele Mele can end up with the, whatchamacallit, with the playoff spot. Mm. And actually, it's very theoretically possible, someone from Mele Mele could take the wild card as well from Kyle. Mm, this is true. But Kyle would have to lose his last three games, or lose like two of his last three games, and one of those games is against me, so it's not highly likely. But <laughs> it, it is actually in the realm of possibility that Kyle could end up losing his wildcard spot. So it's going to be really interesting to see Mele Mele and Akala might end up being even closer than we originally thought. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, so all very interesting stuff. Gives still... Still no discernible sort of definite idea of who's going to be going through the playoffs. Uh, I mean, maybe. Trev, I, think, I think Trev and L5 are safe. Oh, yeah, but, yeah. You know. <laughs> but there's no, nothing, nothing, nothing in the others is particularly set in stone just yet. Yeah, all the others are still up. Like, even Ula Ula with uh, mm. Sly and Cloud, I think, are tied now at 3-2. We'll talk more about them yeah. later. But let's move on to... Uh, actually, let's well, we'll move talk on. about them now. Yeah, we'll talk about them now because they're both right here. Uh, eighth. Yeah. Eighth place we'll talk about first is Cloud and the Jersey Weavile's. Uh, yep. He lost this week against someone he who did. he lose to. L5. L5, L5, that's right. It was a 3-0 in L5's favor, which does put Cloud's winning streak on a hold and puts him at 3-2, which Slyro, after beating RTK, like we said earlier, is also a 3-2, but Cloud has two more differential than Sly. So those two mm. are actually, since Paul is 0-5 somehow, uh, those two are actually duking it out for their playoff spot, absolutely. Mm. And uh, Cloud, in this battle, we did see the long-awaited Sharpedo versus Mega Sharpedo battle. Um, Cloud with the regular Sharpedo, mixed set, very nice build. Um, looked to be putting in a good amount of work. Um, uh, just a few of Cloud's plays confused me a little bit. I feel like he might have suffered a wee bit from uh, misidentifying win conditions. Um, you know, we saw sort of quite early on, um, sacking off Curum. I feel like that was a, a wee bit of a weird call. I'm not sure of all the sets on Cloud's side, but I feel like Curum could have put in more work against L5. Um, and then there was a similar situation a bit later on. He sacked off Sharpedo to Electros when he had this Don fan at very low health. Now, I'm, again, I'm not sure what the Don fan set was. For all I know, it could have actually been an offensive scarf set, which would be why he would save it. And if that's true, then I would take that back. But he sacked off Sharpedo, which I thought was weird, because you've got this mixed speed boosting set that once you weaken down L5's team, it can put in a huge amount of work. Uh, now, it has to be said, Cloud did get quite unlucky. Uh, there was a play rough miss <clears throat> from Mimikyu, which I believe was a roll out of his favor. There was a flinch quite early on, I believe, on Donphan, which was much, much bigger. Uh, it prevented crucial damage uh, from able. Sorry, it prevented Cloud from getting crucial damage on. I think it was the Mega Sharpedo who eventually came through at three and O for L5. So some unfortunateness for Cloud. I think um, maybe a few dubious decisions about what to sack. You know, he the sack plays were correct. I just think that maybe he could have sacked off different things, but he's still looking pretty good. Uh, I think his position in the power rankings is is quite dependent on those around him so it doesn't necessarily reflect how well he's doing in the table that has to be said but uh, a tough loss uh, but you know some cool sets and yeah i think he'll be back on it next week yeah speaking of that actually i just realized that uh, two people who are guaranteed one of them will be in playoffs we have in seventh and eighth <laughs> i didn't realize ah. that but that's also mainly affected by the power rankings aren't supposed to show the actual they're supposed to show the league table at the end of the season more so so, like, the overall one, not the ones that get playoffs. Because if it was just, like, if it wasn't split up in divisions, then I don't think either of them would be eligible right now, or they'd be close. Mm. Yeah. They would, uh, they'd be where they're supposed to be, actually. But, so, 
even though we talk about people who are low, like Frito, for instance, can definitely still get playoffs, but we have him in ninth. Overall, he'll probably end around ninth unless he gets, like, the next three games he wins or something like that. But he can still get playoffs just because of how his other competitors are doing. Yeah. But anyways, let's move on to seventh place, which, as I said, is Slyro in the Pittsburgh Pyroars. He had to take on Power Construct Zygarde and actually, uh, actually pulled through, <laughs> even after mm. losing his best check to it in Drampa to a Sub-Zero Slammer. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I think Sly, Sly was... Um... He was actually a little bit underprepared for the team RTK brought, not not through so much of his own fault. He was, you know, he's taken note of the fact that RTK's team is very physical. Uh, he was well prepped against RTK's physical attackers. Um, Sly, this is more directly to you. I can't remember if you said whether they showed up or not. Uh, if you could just sort of reiterate that for us. I don't think you made it particularly clear in your sort of pre-game part of the video whether those physical attackers showed up or not. Um for those of you who didn't see that, he was very angry and mentioned it, I think, about eight times. Um, there was just lots of hit, lots of sort of footage of him just sitting there shouting about how uh, Dominatan didn't show up and about how, uh, what's that thing, Mian Chow didn't show up. He was he was quite quite aggrieved by the whole situation, really. Um, but it didn't really set him back too much, because for the first half of the battle, it was literally just Uxie taking hits and more while hurting things. And that was actually just the first half of the battle. The, the entire thing, I'm pretty sure, was just Uxie and Mega Morwild doing what they do best. Um, and they allowed Sly to really, really dent RTK's team. I think pretty much Sly's team was put on the backs of Mega Morwild and Uxie doing their respective roles. And I actually think until Zygarde power constructed, he played around it pretty well. Um, he, he put it off from setting up too much by, going, by showing foul play early on Uxie, which was nice. Um, and then we saw the fair play from both to sort out the Zygarde situation. Um, and yeah, Sly able to take the game late on with that very nice Scarf Volcanion. I uh, used to see it a little bit more than you do now, but Sly giving it uh, a little bit of a resurgence. And it almost cleaned up the game, was it not for the, uh, the Electivire, which was Assault Vested, and was able to take Volcanion Sludge Wave, uh, but left it for, uh, for Mega Morwild to come in and clean up. Mega Morwild going 4-0 and this week, which is so much better than it's done. For the rest of uh, for the rest of the week, so I'm sure that made you quite happy. I think it's come every week and gotten a kill and then died. I'm actually double checking this information now. Week one, it came, got a kill and died. Week two, it came, got the only kill in the entire game and then died. Uh, week three, where is Slyro on this? Oh, it didn't get a kill week four. Week three, it did week three. Yeah, week three, kill and died, and then week four, it didn't get a kill. You said? Yeah, it just died. Week four, it just died, and then it made up for that in dividends in week five by going four zero. So it was actually three out of five weeks, that's how it went. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Shroom pretty much covered it about as much as it needs to be. And, yeah, I mean, it was very gentlemanly of them both, despite the unfortunateness that went down. I think Skype is dying, and I've lost Shroom momentarily, so I'm trying to talk until he reappears, because this usually he gets back any second later. But I'll go ahead and introduce the next number as I wait for Shroom to reappear. All right, after some technical difficulties, which you guys will not have seen because I would have just spliced it together for you all, we're back, and we're on a bit of a time crunch as a result of the technical issues. So we're actually oh. going to play, yeah, we're going to play PR speed round for the top six. They're in the top anyways. Mm. They, we don't need to talk about them much. Uh, in sixth place, we have Alex in the Birmingham Spritzy, who won, or no, he lost. He no. lost 3-0 to Kyle, and yeah, that's all we have to say for that on the speed round. So now I can move on to number five. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Shroom, give us the abridged version of the match. Um, basically, I was surprised to see no Slowbro coming off the bench, um, but we did see Defog Mega Beedrill, and it actually used Defog, I think, which was nice. Um, looking too much else, we're going to talk about his team. Um, good start. Turn, turn one, you take down a Lazarus um, Incarnate. That's a brilliant start. Um, and he killed it with Sigalip, which he didn't think was, was going to do all that much too soon. So that was nice. Um, however, I think Alex, despite his team's, you know, his team being what it is, he was unable to get momentum on Shuckle. Uh, nor was he able to transform into it with Ditto for counter hazards. That was unfortunate. He did manage to transform to Lucario. Uh, he immediately saw that he couldn't touch his opponent's Decidueye. And he immediately switched right the hell on back out, knowing that it was coming in. So he was making some good plays where he could... But by the end of the game, you know, Lucario had done its work against him. We'll talk about that later. He just didn't really have enough stuff left to deal with um, 
Decidueye and Heatran on his opponent's side. So he brought the threats, he brought the int- interesting stuff, he brought his new guy, uh, but he just wasn't able to foothold here, despite a good start and an interesting but fairly successful use of Mega Beedrill. Yeah, I remember he actually had a ginning trouble with that Beedrill at first. It didn't want to go through because yeah. it's like, it had that move from Gen 4, and I think it had another move that it got like uh, by level up in another Gen. Drill Run, Drill Run, it got by level up in a different Gen, like Gen 5 or something. But it got defog from Gen 4, and he had some difficulty with it. I didn't know that he had been able to get it through because I haven't gotten to see this battle. But uh, it is, uh, it's good to know that it worked out because that's very interesting. Now we know that there's another defogger in the meta that you can draft in Mega B Drill because people yes. are always looking for hazard removal. And it, it can do a little bit of work sometimes. You know, Mega B Drill has decent special bulk. Its physical bulk, of course, is, is worthless. Um, but it can be EB to take some hits. We saw it ages ago in, in the Battle Union from, from Gabe, in fact, using Beedrill in that way. And Alex, you know, doing his best to kind of emulate that. And he had some good moments. Just, um, yeah, just he was up against someone who was out for blood, and we'll talk about that later as well. Uh, so, yeah, a tough loss for Alex, but uh, still in a good position. Yes, he's 2-3. and three. His, uh, his uh, opponents are 3-2 and two in terms of getting to playoffs. And I believe he actually gets to play Frito like week eight, so he can really turn around differential when he needs to, mm. in, uh, if he has to fight out Frito for it. And there's uh, still a narrow chance that he could, if he doesn't get uh, his playoff spot from being his division champ, he could potentially take wild card from Kyle, despite having lost to him here, depending on how the other games go. But he's definitely still got a very nice chance at playoffs. He's just got to win a handful more of games. So I look forward to seeing how that goes but let's yeah. move let's move on to number five i believe which is one yes. of those opponents that he needs to take down in a surprise upset this week actually uh until now we've been able to say that there's an undefeated team but this week jim from the meath mammoth swines who is now in fifth place in power rankings took on ethan and the tennessee Tynamos and beat them 2-0 so ethan's reign has come to yep. an end yeah <clears throat> this is a great one from jim um you know we know he's um What's the word I'm looking for? Unpredictable and rather yeah. he wins or loses? In, in, inconsistent. Yeah, we'll go with that word, too. But um, this one was brilliant. You know, he had really nice prep. He had a Scarfed Garchomp, which he knew he could put in work, but he also knew that Gramble was the switch in, so he's got Toxic on there for that, and he actually got that right very early on in the game. <clears throat> uh, cursed Body Jellicent over Water Absorb. Good idea here, because, you know, he wasn't necessarily anticipating the Alamo Mola, and if it did come, you know... Uh, water absorb on Jellicent is going to be the last thing on his mind against an Alamo Mola. Um, looking at the, at the game, I actually thought he didn't start off too well. Skarmory going down turn three meant basically he had nothing to switch into a Megalopony, but he never really gave Ethan the chance to get Megalopony going. He was making really good double. He prepped well on Victini, knowing that he could take a pursuit. <clears throat> so that was nice, and I actually came into it. <clears throat> He, uh, he does get paralyzed on his taunt into Reuniclus with, uh, with Jellison. That was unfortunate. Um, but it was one of the few unfortunate things he had. Uh, because then Cursed Body started doing things. It activated, I think, three times during the game. I think... And at mildly crucial times as well. I think only one time it mattered. I can't yeah, it was, um... remember. It like made it to where one Pokemon like could not touch jellicent or something i can't remember yes. which one it was but the other i remember it happened at like one of them was at the very end of the game when it literally meant nothing and then the other one i don't think mattered but i can't remember i watched this game like five uh, days ago yeah, um, the, the one towards the end of the game was uh, on thunderbolt which didn't matter because thunderbolt hit nothing else on jim's team anyway the other one was on ice beam and that did kind of matter because it meant garchomp was a bit freer to come in and start doing things and just ice beam it and kill it so that was quite nice um, Chomp versus Reuniclus was basically a bit of a gamble and win situation for Jim. He just had to, you know, get some high rolls and not get confused. And eventually he managed to get both of those things going in his favor versus Reuniclus. And, uh, Alola Ninetales, it, um, it tried. <laughs> Alola Ninetales is like, I don't know, man. I don't want to say it's a bad Pokemon because Aurora Veil is like one of the greatest abilities of all time, or moves, I mean, of all time mm. that I've seen. Because it's light screen and reflect packed into one. It just needs hail, but it can also be affected by light clay, so you can get eight turns of it. Uh, he was a light clay, a load of nine tails. Yeah, and it's also like it doesn't get 
split, you know? Like, you set up Reflect and then you set up Light Screen. Not only are you giving the opponent two turns, but then one of them wears off before the other, which mm. could be important. But I don't know, man. It just... It's definitely not something you need to rely on. It's like sticky webs. It can really help, but you can't bank on yeah. it, I guess. I don't want to say that, that it's... I don't want to say it's bad, but I don't really want to say that it's great either. It was yeah. This time it was more the sort of the the lack of of power on alone nine tails. But at that point, he just needs to get damage on the Nidor Queen for um Garchomp to take the kill, knowing that it would be Shockerberry, and in fact it was. So it was good play play and prep from Jim. Um, I think this was a great battle for him. You know, this shows exactly what he can do when he's got that motivation, when he's got the wind in his sails. He can really sort of put in great performances, and I think this is one of them. Yeah, it's. I mean, we say this about Jim all the time, and it's all in good fun, but he really can win or lose, like, any game. And a lot of the times it depends on his mood. And I've said this to him to his face, and he's agreed with me wholeheartedly. Like, he's one of those players who's just, like you said, inconsistent, or I like to use the word unpredictable. It's actually, you're using mm. the more derogatory term for once yes, instead yes, of I am. me. This is a complete <laughs> role reversal. Uh, he's one of my fellow moderators in TBU. I have to be nice to him. But, uh... Anyways, yeah, I mean, this was definitely a very good win for Jim. This was one of the games that he was most likely to lose. He still has to play Kyle. But uh, to win that game when he's in such a tight race for playoffs is very, very important for him. Because yeah. winning this means I think he can actually afford to still lose one more game and still have a really good shot at playoffs. So even if he does lose to Kyle, which I'm not going to say he is because he did beat Ethan, but it's very likely, if he can win his other two games, he should still be in a very, very good spot. So it was definitely very yeah. important win for him, and he did it very well. And bringing, like you said, the stuff he brought, it was just great prep on his part, and he executed what he needed to. So, yeah, yeah overall, very well done by Jim. So let's move on to fourth place in this speed round that we're doing, which is L5. He's taken back fourth, which is like his favorite spot in PR, apparently, because he keeps ending up back here. He yeah. took the 3-0 win over Cloud. Yeah, he did. Um, and he brought much the sort of team I would have expected him to bring. Uh, I'd have thought he might want to bring along Cofagrigus, but he didn't in the end. And he didn't. Uh, very nice sub bulk up Landris theory. And you see double dance Landris quite a bit. You see sub rock polish or sub SD. Sub bulk up is also very nice. I didn't, uh, even, if you're... I didn't even know this Pokemon got bulk up until this day. Yeah. It's a pretty useful option. Uh, or indeed, if you're in a, a meme game, which I was in, you sometimes face subcar mind, Landrostherian. But that you is could, a story for another time. You could bring Landotherian with Assault Vest, set up a magic room, go into it, set up bulk ups, and then you've got more Fizz Def and more Spud Def from the Assault Vest once the magic room wears off. Very true. I want to see this on a theme Thursday. Do it, so it please continue. Do it. Yeah, do it. But yes, um, anyway. Uh, Looking at the game for L5, I didn't think it was an amazing start. I um, I think it was a dubious decision to leave Empoleon in versus a Donphan when the Donphan was brought in hard on the Empoleon. I'm starting to suspect it was a Scarf Donphan, or at the very least, offensive. Like, I think bo both moves were fairly dubious, but the fact he brought Donphan hard in on L5's Empoleon probably should have sort of got alarm bells ringing and think something's up, I might need Empoleon later. But it turns out he didn't because he's a very, very good player and he got the flinch against Donphan. Um, and that's, that is the sign of a champion. <clears throat> you, need yeah, to you, know, run, knowing... you need to run your luck sometimes, and he did. Yeah, you know, knowing L5, his thought process was probably something along, uh, along the lines of, well, I may as well fish for a flinch here and see if it works out. Yeah, he didn't actually say that, um, but he, uh, he did get... We all know he was thinking it, though. <laughs> I, like to, I like to think so. <laughs> um, but yes, I think throughout the rest of the game, um, he played very intelligently and very well. You know, he had a bulk up Landris Theron, as we say, and it actually ma managed to get around Swords Dancing Mimikyu. Uh, the player off miss admittedly did help his cause there, um, but I feel like it was a roll. I'm, I'm not sure. I'll have to do some calcs or something. But he played well on threats, and I actually think one of his, one of the biggest moments in this game, and actually probably one of his best moments was when we had Celesteela versus Infinite. Now, I don't know the Celesteela set, but you have Infinite in on the Celesteela, and I think he learned from the Empoleon versus Donphan because Celesteela was brought in, I believe, on the Infinite. And he was instantly thinking, hang on a minute, why would you bring Celesteela in on Infinite? Okay, it's either Ockerberry or um, it's got some sort of build to take on Infinite. It might have even been weakness policy. Um, or, you know, he's like, it's, it's built to take a hit and it's going to be able to take me out with Air Slash or Earthquake. And he calls, he calls out Cloud on that. 
Um, because he knows he might need infinite later for Thunder Asterion. So that was actually very intelligent play by him. Um, I think that was could have been, uh, depending on the Celesteela set, that could have been a game-changing moment. It could have been a game-saving moment. If he had given that Celesteela like a weakness policy boost, and then it had gotten a Totemize off, it could have swept through him. So that was very nice by him. Uh, Thunder Asterion, oh, no. not quick attacked, but that's fair enough. He, he managed to take the game in the end. So yeah, it was a well-played game for L5. A couple of Slightly dodgy moments, but overall, a very well-played game. Yes, I agree entirely. You died for half a second there, but the time warp fixed it somehow again. So, Excellent. yes, I think your internet is dying again, but hopefully we can get through, like, ten more minutes of three teams before that happens. Yeah. But you pretty much covered it with Al5. I, I will always choose to believe that he was thinking in his mind, but he didn't say it out loud because he knew you would watch. He'd be like, yeah. uh, I'm going to, like, there's no point in not going for the flinch here, but if I say it out loud, Shroom's going to try and roast me again, so I'm just, like, not going to say anything. <laughs> Mm. But uh, let's move on to third place, which features Kyle and the Harlem Gloomtrotters. He had a victory over Alex this week, a 3-0 in his favor. And yeah. Yeah. yeah um, Kyle Kyle will have been out for blood in this one. He's had a couple of, couple of pretty bad weeks, not due to any of his fault, you know. So he will have wanted to take this one convincingly. And I think he did. Uh, Fire Blast Aerodactyl, Mixed Aerodactyl, that's fun times. Torment Heatran, uh, he never actually got to show off, but I did like that he ran it. That was quite cool. You know, expecting some form of Scarfer or Choice Item, I expect. Um, he lost Lando Tone 1 to Sigleth, and I thought, oh dear, what's going on here? But he said it was okay, and it was. Uh, he played a very good Shuckle game, uh, knew exactly what he had to do to maintain his hazards. Uh, he knew if it came down to PP, he was going to win that one, and he managed to keep everything up. And then Lucario came in and killed about half Alex's team. Uh, so that was nice. Uh, it was a really nice Lucario build. build. It was actually brilliant because, um, as we mentioned briefly early on, uh, he had set up on Lucario, big setup, sub sword stance, uh, despite Ditto because he had Decidueye and Lucario's moves were extreme speed and drain punch. So he knew that if Ditto came in and became his Lucario, he had something that hard walled it, and that's exactly the situation that happened and stopped Decidueye doing, um, sorry, just stopped, stopped Ditto doing any work on his opponent's side. So that was really nice. Lucario gets half his, his kills, and yeah, then he was able to sort of clear up the game, I believe, with the Heatran and a bit of help from Decidueye as well. Very nice play, clinical finish from Kyle, uh, back in the game. Yeah, it was uh, very well done, and he definitely did need the comeback after uh, the last two weeks where, against Ethan, he had a 5% chance to win. Or, I mean, to lose, rather. And he yeah. got the 5% chance. And then uh, there was where Merc got hacked against L5 that I don't remember exactly what happened. But, I mean, it's mm. not really hacks because L5 called out before that he would win through hacks because that's how he beat Kyle the previous season. So, if you, uh. if you call it, it's not hacks. But, yes. uh, anyways, yeah, you pretty much covered it. And, like I said, we're in speed round, so... I'm just going to move us on to second place, which sees the King being moved down slightly, even mm. in the Tennessee Tynamos, unfortunately losing to Jim this week, or Jimberly, as it is put on the on the weak matches for some reason. I bet that has something to do with Jade being in charge of the sheet. Uh, mm. He took the narrow 2-0 loss to Jim because Cursed Body is the greatest ability of all time. Yeah, um, I was worried for Ethan when I looked at the team and saw no hazard removal versus a Skarmory when you have a Sneasel and a Chandelure. But Ethan is a good enough player to know that you don't need hazard removal if you just kill Skarmory turn three. Exactly. So that was fine. That's all it takes. Uh, it, got, it got the rocks up, but, you know, he, he was just like, there, there will be no spikes or anything here. I, I will just kill you now. And he did. Uh, I think he let Gramble take too much damage uh, early on. You know, he allowed it to take all the damage that it did, but he did isolate Victini very well. Uh, because he realized, you know, Ethan has brought along two fairies. And he's got a Nidor Queen. Sorry, um, Jim has brought along two fairies, and Ethan's got a Nidor Queen. He realizes that the Nidor Queen is vital versus his fairies. He, he identified again. This was a good showing of identifying win conditions very well indeed. Uh, and they changed sort of halfway through. I think he, th he thought it was going to be Chandelure early on, but then sort of quite quickly realized, hang on a minute, no, Chandler is not winning me this game, Nido Queen is winning me this game, uh, and that was fantastic foresight by him. On the other hand, he didn't kill Victini when he had the chance to do it, 
And I think that was quite big. He lost Chandelure because of it. And while we've, we've assessed that Chandelure wasn't a win con, it could have done more work um, if it hadn't sort of gone down when it did. Um, and he took lots of damage on Nidoqueen, Queen, but that was okay. I just think the, sh- the loss of Chandelure and not taking his chance to kill Victini when he had the chance to do so was, was a little bit unfortunate. I don't think rocks at that time for him were as necessary as he thought. He looked to be doing quite badly versus Comfy as well. He looked to be sort of flailing a little bit. You know, he took massive damage on Nido King. He sacked off Monza a lot. And then he showed why, because then he healing wished into his 2 HP Nido Queen. And that was a potential game changer. You know, I can only imagine Jim's heart sank when he first saw that. You know, he's got a Nido Queen down to 2 HP. He's forced his opponent to sack off uh, Chandelure and Sneasel. And then... He goes into the Lopany and he's like, I can take this out. I can finish this game with, with Comfe. And then he healing wishes into Nido Queen. And that was a big moment. <clears throat> Ethan looked like he'd wrestled himself back into the game. But once again, he, 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 neg- he, he neglected to go for damage versus Garchomp when he had the chance with Reuniclus. He, he, knew, he knew he needed to keep Reuniclus healthy, but it was sort of a toss-up of whether you keep Reuniclus as healthy as possible or you gamble on the... Um, the confusions that Garchomp was suffering, or do you go for the damage versus it? He didn't go for the damage, and it does end up biting him. He takes the 2 loss, but it's his first of the season. Like He's still very much a favourite at this point. Um, and yeah, I think, much like Kyle this week from last week, Ethan will just be out for, for a scalp next week. It's going to be... I, I pity whoever he's facing. Because uh, it's Frito. It's going to be Bruton. Oh, oh, Frito. Oh, I pity him. Because that's probably going to be quite brutal. Would you I say would that you pity the fool? Yes, very much so. All right, good. I'm because glad we're on the same Ethan's page. Gonna, Ethan's going to want a big win. He's going to want a big win. He really doesn't need one. I think he just needs a win period, and he's like cinched yeah. playoffs at this point. Yeah. But a big one makes it more fun for him. Anyways, of course. Let's uh, let's get on to number one. Back where he belongs. After we said that he would be there the whole season, we forgot that that didn't count week three to four apparently, or week two to four. I can't remember when mm. we moved him down. But uh, Trev and the Houston Toxapexans back up in first place with what we considered to be the best team in the league at the start of the season, at least. Uh, yeah. He's now moved that around a bit to get Mega Alakazam instead of Zerkatry, I believe, was the only change he made, and he got a two a win over Paul, keeping Paul's losing streak alive. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he's brought full hazards back this week. You know, once again, he's seen that his opponent doesn't have any grounded poisons. And a poison on a Mega Blastoise, which is his spinner, <clears throat> is what you really want. So he's brought rocks on Registeel, he's brought T-spikes on the Scolipede, and he's brought spikes on Greninja. Now, in the end, I think he only actually got up the spikes. He might have got rocks up as well. He certainly didn't get T-spikes up, but... He played well to get those spikes up. You know, he had Greninja in versus a Mew that had just shown Drain Punch and done massive damage. And he stays in, sitting on his giant testicles, uh, as Mew <laughs> switches out, and he gets spikes up. <laughs> well played, Trev. That was that was a fantastic time to get spikes up, and, and very well done indeed. Uh, to be honest, early game, for Trev at least, there wasn't really all that much to talk about. He kind of... Sits there whittling down Mega Blastoise, uh, takes it out along with Curum Black, which was a good sacrifice. <clears throat> I think Mega Blastoise was one of Paul's most important mons. And Trevor's able to take it out along with Curum Black. Then we had the um, the, Reg- the Registeel Licky Licky thing, uh, during which time I went on holiday. I spent a week in Barbados. It was lovely. Came back, they were still on in the field. Where? Barbados. Where is that? Are you gonna Are you gonna say it's Barbados? I've never heard of it. It's like a Caribbean island. Why wouldn't you just say, like, the Bahamas? It's, it's, I think it's, like, near there. I, I don't know. I was never very good at geography. Do the British people normally go with bar whatever instead of the Bahamas? I, I, I don't know. I haven't left the country in, like, five years. I honestly thought that you had never left the country, period, but okay. I, I've never left my room. I've been here <laughs> yeah, all was, my life. I was about to say. All right, please uh, finish but, uh, speaking. But, yes, <clears throat> for, uh, after, after the Reggie Steel versus Licky Licky thing... Uh, when I celebrated my 50th birthday. Um, basically, it looked like I thought Trev just wasn't playing amazingly well. He was making some good plays, but I thought in general he was letting things take a lot of damage and letting things go down too much. But what I forgot was that he had Mega Alakazam, and all he was doing was just getting things in range. He was just damaging the things that needed damaging and KOing anything that could feasibly stand in the way of Mega Zam. 
And then in the end, he just brought in Megazam and got three kills and finished up the game. Uh, so yeah, it was actually just once again, much like I think week one, we saw this where Trev was happy to let things go if it meant he could get the necessary damage to something else later on. It doesn't seem like he's too concerned with differential, which is fine in his position. Um, he just needs the wins and the consistent wins. And he's, he's getting them with this team and Megazam proving itself as a valuable addition. Yeah, Trev is at the point, I think he's 4-1 right now. His only yeah. loss was that one against Ethan. <clears throat> yeah. uh, and he actually is, if I'm not mistaken, tied with L5 for his division. Mm. But, uh, well, actually, the other division that can take the wild card is Sly and Cloud, who are both 3-2. So it is feasible the differential might matter, but his differential is so far ahead of them already, it doesn't matter. Because he's, yeah. uh, he's at 13 diff as of this week, and then Sly is at 1, and... Cloud is it? He would have to have some big losses for it to matter. Yeah. At yeah. this point, all he needs is like one or two more wins, and he's basically in there. So he can definitely afford to not worry about diff so much. He really just needs a win or two, and he's good. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you covered it pretty well. He was getting stuff in Ranger Mega Zam, and uh, really, he didn't have to worry that much. I mean, he was playing like the second worst player in the league. Cause, you know, was like <laughs> oh five. But uh, you know, we love to poke fun at you, Paul. We know you're a good player. Don't worry. Yeah. You're such a good player. We have to relish in this one opportunity to yeah to see that, that is that is poorly. true. That is true. This is the only time it's ever going to happen. Like you won last season, you get crapped on this season, and then you go back to being a good player who at least makes playoffs like every single season. So yeah. we have to enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you covered it pretty well. So I think that we can go ahead and wrap up here because we yeah. both have places to be. Thank you all for watching. We hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave your opinions of who should be where for PR in the comments down below. We'd love to hear what you have to say if you have any disagreements with us. We'll be looking forward to week six where we'll start to get a clearer view of who's going to be getting those playoff spots. I'm hoping it's still going to be really close for Mele Mele, and maybe we can start to get a bit of a clearer picture on who has a chance and who doesn't because in eight-week leagues, it's normally week six and seven when you start to find out if people can still make it or not. So it's going to be really intriguing to see what week six shows in that department. Yeah, absolutely. We've got some really interesting games. Like, I think one of the ones I'm most looking forward to, um, Alex versus Jim. That's going to be a very fun game indeed. Are you um, are you excited for the slaughter fest that is going to be me against Kyle? Oh, God, yes. That's going to be so exciting. Yeah, me versus Kyle with me using Baby Eye's team. But he does have Z Salamence, yeah. so I'm glad he left me that at least. I can finally use Jirachi. So my only goal is to, like, make it not a 5 or 6 0. If I can take out two of Kyle's Pokemon, I'll consider it a win. That seems fair. That seems fair. But uh, and that's something I'd like to hear in the comments personally. Do you think that Chaos will be able to do that? <laughs> don't, don't answer that question. <laughs> No, do answer that question. I want to know the answer. It's very important to me that I hear the answer to that question. For those of you who haven't seen me play Pokemon, I'm not, like, dirt horrible at the game. Like, I think I'd have a better differential than Paul has right now if I started it the season, is all I'm saying. But mm -hmm. I'm nowhere near the level that Kyle is. I'm, like, a mid-tier player. Kyle is, like, whatever is above high tier. It's, like, yeah. low tier, mid tier, that's where I am. Then it's high tier, and then it's the Kyle tier, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. that's, that's where, like, Trev and L5 hang out. So, yeah, but anyways, yes. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. Also, of course, Paul versus Sly. Oh, that's going to be so good. Maybe Paul just, will just, finally stop losing. Just just two, two of the worst people. <laughs> exactly. You can tell by their, you can tell by the fact that Sly has a winning record and Paul has, this is the most <laughs> backward season of all time and the two backwards yeah. uh, coaches are going to play. It's going to be fun. It's going to be great. But anyways, thank you all for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. We will see you mm -hmm. next week for Week 6's PR with some very fantastic games. Can't wait for Shroom to crap on me when I'm automatically put in 12th place because oh, I took over I'm SS. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm like not going to talk for the first five minutes. But uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll see you all then. And until that time, farewell. Laters.